Alright. Here is the Samsung Galaxy A12. Safe to say that this is an old phone since this was released last December of 2020, but you can still buy this now, year 2023 for 9,000 Philippine pesos. We have the usual inner box which contains only the paperworks, no free phone case here. We have the Galaxy A12 itself. Let's put that aside first and see what's included in the box. We have the 15 watt charger here. And the charging cable which is a USB A to USB C. And look at that. We have a free earphone from Samsung. Let's get to the Samsung Galaxy A12 phone now and unwrap it. Okay. Nice glossy screen here, without a pre-installed screen protector. On the right side we have the power button which is also the side-mounted fingerprint scanner. And above that we have the volume racker. I am a fan of a side-mounted fingerprint scanner, but the one here is A12 is not that great. It takes 2 seconds before it responds, and sometimes it totally misses my finger. But what can we do? This is more than 2-year-old hardware here. On top of the phone, we have just one small dot here which is probably a microphone. On the left side we have the SIM tray. And the bottom of the phone hosts the headphone jack, another tiny microphone hole, the USB Type-C charging port, and the mono speaker. The back of the phone is made out of plastic with a carbon fiber-like design for almost two-thirds of the space, while the bottom part is smooth with the Samsung logo on it. When we pop out the SIM tray, we can see that it can house two nano SIM cards and a micro SD slot. I'm not sure what's the maximum capacity this SD card tray can hold. If you know the answer to that, drop a comment below please. Samsung Galaxy A12 is available in black, white, blue and red colors, with a length of 6.46 inches, a width of 2.98 inches, and thickness of 0.35 inch. And the A12 weighs 205 grams. Galaxy A12 has four rear camera lenses. The main is a 48 megapixel with f2.0 aperture. Ultra wide is just a 5 megapixel lens, and we have a macro and a depth sensor, both are 2 megapixel lens. Well, the selfie camera is a below 2023 20, average of 8 megapixel shooter with f2.2 aperture. The loading of the camera is slow, even for a 2020 standard. We have the usual options here for portrait where you can adjust the effect strength. Photo that gives you in from 0.5 or 10 times zoom. The video which also gives you the same amount of zoom options. Then the more options for pro, panorama, food and macro modes. Pretty much the usual options for a camera UI, nothing special. The selfie camera UI is almost the same as the main UI, except that for portrait and photo modes, we have an option here for a normal and an ultra-wide shots. And as you can see now, the UI does not respond to any touches that I do. This is probably just a glitch since this is the first time I opened the UI, but it is still very annoying. There we go. At last. On the video we have no other options here, just the video shutter. And for more, we have the same modes as what is in the photo. The screen is a 6-inch PLS TFT LCD display, not an IPS, and definitely not an OLED. This screen is fixed with a 60Hz refresh rate display, which is a bummer. And the brightness can only go up to 400 nits. It has an 82% screen-to-body ratio, which is decent enough. And another bummer, this display is only a 720p with 720 by 1600 pixels, on a 20 by 9 ratio. Screen density is also low at only 270 ppi. But, since the screen is made by Samsung, who is the maker of probably the best Android phone screens out there, it is still decent enough. On a bright sunny day outside, you will need to set it to full brightness, and even then, you still need to flinch your eyes a bit to see the screen. It's not as bright and as crisp as the latest mid-range phones out there like the Poco M5, but for a 9000 peso phone, it is good enough. Samsung A12 runs on Android 11, with one UI 3.1 skin out of the box. But upon setting it up, it has pop-up updates upon updates, next after the other. First was just a one UI update. Then after that, I received another update which is an upgrade to Android 12, and for one UI 4.1, which I immediately applied, of course. Then after that, I again received an upgrade notice for Android 13, for one UI 5. I mean, Samsung really brought it up a notch on their update support department. Even though this phone is basically two years old already, it feels new since I am also using Android 13 now. The A12 is running under a MediaTek MT6765 Helio P35 12 nanometer chip with power VRG8320 GPU. And the variant I have here is 128 gigs of eMMC 5.1 storage with 4 gigs of RAM. Other variants of A12 includes 32.2, 32.3, 64.4, 128.3, 128.4, and 128.6, and it depends on your region on which of these variants are available to you. 
On the audio department, Samsung Galaxy A12 has a single loudspeaker located at the bottom of the phone. It also has an FM radio capability and a headphone jack, which is a great feature. Who would have thought that 3.5mm jack would be scarce in our time? Big companies will do everything to force consumers to buy their more expensive products, like the Bluetooth earbuds. Ain't that right Apple and Samsung? Here's the actual sound of the loudspeaker. Okay. The speaker is okay if you are in a closed room. But outside, the sound is too low. You can hear it, but you probably wouldn't understand what is being said. And this is just a mono speaker, so when playing games, especially the shooting games, your hand will probably cover the speaker which will affect the immersive experience of the game. Anyway, let's just keep in mind that we are talking about a 2020 phone here that costs just 9000 pesos, so let's not expect too much. Samsung A12 comes with a 5000 mAh lithium polymer battery, which is one of the best features of this phone. The box comes with a 15 watt charger, and at this price range, we obviously will not expect any wireless charging here. But the huge battery and LCD screen with only a 720p resolution, we can expect a great battery life on the A12. I am getting 8 to 11 hours screen on time on this, depending on what you do. I usually don't need to top up the battery until after 1 and a half to 2 days, which is a really amazing battery life. For the charging, we have a big battery capacity with a mini school 15 watt charger, so expect it to take an eternity until it gets full. On average, 0 to 100% takes 2 hours and 40 minutes. So my advice is to charge it every night, which is when your battery percentage is still probably around 40%. By doing this, you won't need to wait too long before it's full, and will always have enough juice on the go. If you are interested on the benchmark values for the Samsung Galaxy A12, I am posting it at the top right corner of the screen. I really don't believe in them since the real world usage almost always translate differently, but it's there if you need it. And for that real world experience, it is average. Nothing great and nothing so bad either. I have been using phones with a 90Hz or above screen refresh rate since 2019, so the fixed 60Hz refresh rate here in A12 feels slow for me. But that's just me. I'm sure for most of the people who are still using 60Hz displays, this will still be as good as other phones. I have experienced some lags from time to time, especially when you have three or more apps open at the same time. And the lag on the camera UI that I've shown earlier is fixed now, after updating to One UI 5. And other than that, everything is just as normal usage as it can be. Even though the phone's hardware is more than two years old, it can still game. As you might already know, the only graphics-heavy games I play are Asphalt and Call of Duty Mobile. Other games are either old or does not require heavy GPU usage like Tekken 7 and PPSSPP, NBA Jam, Clash Royale, and other much older games. And I can play Asphalt and COD Mobile and A12 without a problem. The graphic settings is low to medium of course, but everything is working as expected. As I've said, overall performance of the A12 is average. Now let's talk about the camera of Samsung A12. On a bright full of light setup, the camera performs well. It captures many details, and the colors are very close to real life. Even on a more challenging situation where there are two exposures, the sunlight and a shade, it still captures great photos on both sides of the spectrum. Although, maybe about 20% of the time, the dynamic range would be bad, and photos might come up washed out. But hey, it's nothing that an extra two or three more shots could not fix. Taking more shots of the same subjects brings up a great chance of capturing a good one. For low-light photos using the main lens, it's a hit or miss for the subject of the photo, but for the background, it is constantly grainy and noisy. Low-light shots are average to below average. They are usable, but not that great. Portrait shots are very much the same as normal shots. On a well-lit situation, it captures accurate colors and full of details, with a great subject separation. The depth sensor is a big help for these great portrait shots. Even the blurring effect of the background from low at front area to heavy blurring as it goes to the back is great. Again, like the normal shots, about 20% of the time, the portrait shot blurs parts of the subject, especially when its color is near to the background color. And sometimes, it totally does not apply any blurring at all. For low-light portrait shot, just forget it. They are not usable at all. 
just don't use portrait mode on a low light. The normal light shot of the 8 megapixel selfie camera is very decent. It has good details, a bit more saturated colors, and also a bit muddy if you zoom in, but overall a good selfie camera. You also have an option for a wide-angle shot on the same selfie lens, and the shot is not as good as the normal selfie shot, but still very useful and good. The portrait shot in the selfie camera is even lesser in quality. About 80% of the time, it gets a grainy or blurry shot. Usable but below average pictures. And finally, the low-light selfie shots is just plain bad. It lacks exposure, super grainy, and just overall a really bad quality. I don't think these are usable either. Let's now move on to video recording. On a bright environment, I can't see no flaws on the A12 video capabilities, other than the non-existence of image stabilization. Again, this is a very cheap phone, so those features are not really expected here. The videos are clear, full of details, and vibrant. There is also an automatic bokeh effect happening here, which is probably the depth sensor doing its work even on video recording. Autofocus is also great. It's not as fast as the flagship level cameras, but it gets the job done. It takes about one and a half to two seconds to adjust its focus, which is a bit slow, but it is always on point. This is even more accurate than the autofocus of my Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4. Aside from autofocus, the camera's adjustment on the change of exposure is also great. It can automatically adjust itself to the best level of exposure based on the current environment it is recording. Just like what you are seeing here, where I am moving from a bright sunny area onto a shaded area without a light, and it automatically adjusts itself to record the video, with the best amount of exposure for a great and clear video output. Very nice. On the low light, the video comes out really noisy. Dynamic range is non-existent, and the darker area are unrecognizable. The Galaxy A12 is definitely not made for low light situations. The low light videos produced by A12 might be debatable if it is usable or not, but for me personally, I think it takes garbage footage in low light. It's just plain and simple bad on low lights. Selfie videos are much more like it, but only if there are enough light. Even then, the footage it produced is still way behind what the main rear camera can record, but it is decent enough and very usable. Selfie videos for low light is a very different story. It is too noisy, too grainy and too unexposed or too dark for a video. And the environment when this footage was shot is not even that dark. As you can see, there are a lot of LED lights all around me when did this video recording. Overall for the camera department, the main rear camera is great. Selfie is average. And one rule for all the lenses, stay away from low light situations. Alright. Obviously, I did not create this review for the people who can afford the latest and greatest phones out there, who might not have even heard of Samsung Galaxy A12 yet. This video is intended for the masses. For those who are budget conscious and wants to get each of their very last pennies worth. Those who will not really care for features that are good to have, but not really a necessity. Like wireless charging, which is really convenient, but you can still charge your phone even without it. Or a 144Hz refresh rate, when a 60Hz screen can also scroll through icons and websites just as easily. Or the latest Wi-Fi 6 or Bluetooth version, which is good to have, but not a requirement to connect to the internet and other devices. Or a stereo speaker which is nice, but you can still hear the sound clearly on a mono speaker anyway. Or a waterproofing and the latest Gorilla Glass protection, when in real life, you don't capitalize on those extra features anyway, since we protect our phones more than a baby. Or a dedicated telephoto lens, moonshot capability, night photography and other camera capabilities, when even just one super high quality lens can already do the job for most of us. And that is basically the story of Samsung Galaxy A12. You will not have all the bells and whistles of a flagship cell phone, but you'll get all the features that matters. You can do all the usual things being done on a cell phone. Maybe not as fast, maybe not as elegant, and maybe not as good, or as clear, or as bright. But the point is, you can still do all of it on a Galaxy A12. And it is just perfectly okay if everything is not as good. You know why. Because the Samsung Galaxy A12 costs just a tiny fraction of the greatest and latest. I mean, you can buy 10 to 15 Galaxy A12 for the price of just one flagship phone. So, if budget is a big consideration for you on buying a new phone, then Samsung Galaxy A12 might be the most fitting phone for you. It might not be as shiny as the expensive ones, but it can definitely deliver all your cell phone needs that matters. If you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. If it has helped you in any way, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Millisuge for watching. Nova Air.